Welcome back to another episode of Psycho Cinematic. Today we are comparing the book Halloween Party written by Agatha Christie with the movie A Haunting in Venice directed by Kenneth Branagh and as always, spoilers ahead. So first I'm going to get into the biggest similarities between the book and the movie as well as the differences and then I'll go into the review of the movie and the book. So firstly, there's almost nothing similar from the book to the movie. It's kind of ridiculous. One of the biggest similarities are the character names, but even that they changed. They'll keep the name and then completely change the character or the character's relationship in the story. For example, the medium that's in the movie, her name is Mrs. Reynolds. And in the book, the Reynolds family is the family that all of the death is surrounding because it starts off with a little girl named Joyce Reynolds who is drowned in a bucket of water for apple bobbing. Mrs. Reynolds is just a mom and Leopold, that little boy in the movie who loses his father, that's actually the sibling of the little girl that dies in the book. And he also dies in the book. So they just completely, like they take these names and then they just kind of, I, I, I really don't even see the purpose of doing that. But the movie does that a lot where they take some details from the book and then completely change its relevance in the movie. So a couple of the other really big similarities are there is a Halloween party. Thank God they kept that the same because the book is literally called Halloween Party. Mrs. Drake is still the killer from the book to the movie. Not only that, but she is also getting blackmailed in the book and in the movie. Mrs. Drake is still involved with a love interest in the movie, but here it's backwards because in the book, she is obsessed with a man. In the movie, a man is obsessed with her. And then here's another one of those details that they take and then they just do whatever with it. This movie talks about how the foreigners have forged passports that are pretty obviously forged. In the book, it's all about a forged will and who is going to inherit all this money that this rich widow has. Now here's some of the biggest differences between the book and the movie. The biggest difference for sure is the fact that the book is set in England in Woodley Commons, whereas the movie is obviously in Venice. I like that change. I think Venice is a way cooler setting. Rowena Drake, in the book, she's really just an inheritor of wealth and a nice home from her aunt-in-law who passed away. So because so many things are different between the book and the movie, the mystery History is different in the book. In the book, while they're planning this Halloween party, the young girl who gets drowned in the apple bobbing bucket, her name is Joyce Reynolds. And she that night says how she has witnessed a murder before. She just didn't realize it was a murder at the time. And that murder she was speaking of was when Rowena Drake and her love affair at the time, who was just this really handsome artist landscaper who basically did this crazy garden at the home that she's now living in. Rowena Drake and this man noticed that someone was watching them dispose of the body that they had killed. The body who was actually Olga, who is in the movie. Olga was that caretaker lady who ends up leaving with the medium's two assistants and Leopold at the end. But in the book, she is the au pair to the rich widow who ends up dying. Rowena Drake and this man she was having an affair with kill her off because she was going to inherit all the money because this old woman found out that Rowena Drake is having an affair cheating on her nephew who Rowena Drake was married to. This is all very confusing when you don't know all these characters that are in the book. So I don't blame you if you're not tracking. So let's move on. In the book, there's literally no haunting. Rather, there's just a brief allusion to Satan because the man that Rowena Drake is having an affair with is handsome like Satan. And that man attempts to sacrifice his daughter in the end, just like Agamemnon from Greek mythology and then flee to a Greek island. So those are the biggest similarities and differences. Now here's my review on the movie and the book. I thought that the mystery of this movie was just okay. I know I'm a little bit biased because I already knew Rowena Drake was supposed to be a killer or the killer, but there's no honey in the book. And as soon as Perot started hallucinating and seeing all these ghosts, I already knew it was the honey. I felt like it was glaringly obvious, especially when the ex-fiance tastes it and says how he can't pinpoint it and it's surely not wildflower. I think he said wildflower. So I saw all that coming even though that's not in the book. I was really bummed that the medium died so early on in the movie because I was hoping for more of this Scooby-Doo-esque ghosts and spirits and it's continuously backed up by someone who's really hard to disprove. And even though Perot disproved her in the beginning, there was still some details that he was having trouble 
disproving. And I was hoping that that was going to continue making you really wonder if there actually were ghosts and spirits involved. In my opinion, there's a handful of cheap jump scares as well as a couple decent jump scares, but I think that this would be the perfect horror movie for a family with some children. It walks that line perfectly for a kid to not be that scared, but enjoy the the little dosage of horror that's in it. I will give credit where credit is due. The man who plays Hercule Poirot is actually the director, and I didn't realize that he directed Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile. I would say that this movie is definitely better than A Death on the Nile, but I don't know if it's better than Murder on the Orient Express. I've only seen that film once, and I saw it when it came out in theaters. I do remember enjoying that one much more than this one. I still found this movie entertaining, but I would probably give it just a 7 out of 10. As far as the book goes, I'm probably placed similarly where it's like a 7 out of 10. It was entertaining enough, but I also didn't think that the mystery was that great. Not that it was obvious, but it just wasn't as engaging as I would have hoped. This was my first Agatha Christie book that I've ever read, but I've read plenty of murder mysteries, and some of those other murder mysteries were more fun for me to participate in and try and guess who done it. So if you have read Halloween Party or if you have watched The Haunting in Venice, I'm curious to know what you thought about the book or the movie down in the comments section below. I'm interested to see where you guys stand versus me. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Psycho Cinematic and I'll see you in the next one.